Hi friends, welcome back to LGF. So in the 12th lecture, we discussed about the second order system and to that system we applied the unit step input, we got CT in the range of 0 to 1 means for the under dam system, we got this formula if you remember. Please try to remember this formula, this is very important, okay. If you will get the question from this unit, second unit definitely there will be question from this only okay so the time domain specification of this system we have seen the delay time 1 plus 0.7 zeta by omega n rise time pi minus phi divided by omega t where what is the phi and what is omega t you know very well then we have seen the peak time peak time is given by n pi divide by omega d where n equal to 1 3 5 for the overshoot for the undershoot n values are 2 4 6 and so on then we have seen the time settling time settling time is three values we got first is three times of time constant 4 tau 5 tau 3 tau we have seen for the tolerance band plus minus 5% 4 tau we have seen for plus minus 2 percent, 5 tau we have seen for plus minus 0 percent or I can say for the 0 percent. Then we have seen the maximum peak overshoot in the percentage the formula is e to the power minus zeta n pi divided by 1 minus zeta square under root into 100. Please do not make mistake to take this term over here. Okay, why I am going to emphasize this again and again, so you will learn in this way. Okay, whenever you will get this formula, you will not do the mistake over here. Okay, so the maximum peak is actually the output at peak time minus steady state value divided by steady state value into 100. This is in a percentage. Okay, so this is the brief discussion of the last lecture, lecture 12. Now I have to start lecture 13. In this, we will see one question, then we will switch to the steady state output. See friends, over here in this question, it is given, uh, wait a minute. The impulse response of the system is given. This is the impulse response given. Impulse response we discussed in the previous lecture that its transfer function of the system. I think in the uh, first or second lecture of the control system, in the starting we discuss about the transfer function and transfer function is nothing but the impulse response. For any system, impulse response means the transfer function of the system correct friends. So, this is the transfer function is given and we have to find out. So, for this particular system, I had to apply the unit step input, correct. This is your CT is given, its kind of situation. Here, this is the transfer function or the impulse response you have given with. To this system, you have to apply unit step, you will get some output, okay. You will get that output and you have to find out TP. This is the peak time, settling time, zeta, your damping ratio, your natural frequency of oscillation, your uh, delay time TD where the output reaches 50% of the max value, your rise time and percentage of MP. Friends, this is the system definitely this will be second order system because you have under damped system because you have damped oscillation. This sine function is going to provide sustained oscillation at t equal to infinity. What will be the nature of sine function at t equal to infinity? It will be continuously oscillate like this. This is the situation at t equal to infinity for the cosine and sine functions. Now you are multiplying this sine function with a decay exponential. What it means? It means that it will be decay like this. So you have damped oscillation. This is the case of under damped system. Okay. So this system or the transfer function or this system will going to introduce zeta in between 0 to 1. Whatever input you will apply, 
that particular input will be under damped okay i have to calculate over here like this tp and all these parameters so friends e to the power minus 3t is given this term is belongs to the real part of the pole this belongs to the real part of the pole and this is the you know your dimmed frequency omega d i can say correct if you have seen our formula that is the output for the unit step i can't compare directly but in the second stage or uh, whatever output we have seen there this part i'm talking about it was zeta omega n t if you remember 1 minus zeta square under root sin omega d t plus phi okay so omega d t your damping frequency so this is not natural frequency this is the damping frequency when system is damped this will become the omega d not omega n i hope it's clear to you now see this is the zeta omega n multiply of multiplier of this t with negative sign see this is the real part of or, or not for the under dim system if you remember this we calculated your poles and there we got zeta omega n plus minus j omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square so this is nothing but the real part this real part we got in the final formula over here so the exponential term whatever is given over here this is the this is your uh, uh, real part okay this entire thing will consider the minus sign also so what will be the time constant for this system then it will be minus 1 by this minus 3 so here you are getting 1 by 3 now you got the time constant value the time constant value you got is 1 by 3 this is perfectly fine okay now what is omega d omega d is 4 directly you can take omega d from here your uh, tau is uh, uh, 1 by 3 now if someone is asking for the ti settling time also but for the settling time they are not going to specify what is the tolerance bend so what you have to consider practically we consider four times of time constant because zero tolerance bend is not possible to get okay so so settling time is four times of time constant if you remember this four time of time constant we have seen for two minus plus minus two uh, tolerance for five tau we have seen for the zero percent so this is not practically possible so if nothing is given in the question you have to consider four time of time constant so this is four into one by three so this is nothing but four by three you'll get one point three three second okay in the gate examination they'll ask this question and they if they'll mention find out ts in millisecond your answer is this you will convert this into the millisecond then you will write the answer okay what is the millisecond of this the millisecond of this will be one three three zero so in the answer box you will write one three three zero if in hurry you will just put there 1.33 you will lose your 0.33 marks okay so for the silly and simple question if you are losing the marks please do not do like this okay so time constant is over now they are asking for the omega n yes they are asking for the omega n so how to calculate this omega n friends if I'll write this time constant and let me take on over here if you have the real part and real part is nothing but according to this whatever function given to you is ct is nothing but e to the power minus 3t sin omega uh, over here they mention the 4 4 t okay friends so over here this is 4 given correct 
so the resultant of this two term is nothing but our omega n okay let me change the color then i'll show you over here the resultant of this two term is our natural frequency of oscillation this is our omega n this is your omega d this is real part that is zeta omega n so this omega n can i write this is 3 or not yes this is 3 what about this this is 4 so what about this omega n square is nothing but 9 plus 16 so omega n is 5 so this is natural frequency of oscillation definitely it will be higher than damping frequency damping is 4 radian per second if you damp the system system speed will reduced okay speed in terms of oscillations so i hope it's clear to you now now what is zeta if you remember we have seen phi is nothing but cos inverse zeta so zeta is nothing but cos phi or not this phi is the angle between these two terms this is the angle of phi for any system this is the angle now you have to calculate cos phi so cos phi is base divided by this 5 okay so you will get 0.6 your zeta value you will get 0.6 okay so here this is the phi value uh, i'm doing it wrongly your zeta is cos 3 by 5 so you will get your value is 0.6 so you calculated your zeta they asked about zeta also so this is clear 0.6 okay okay perfectly fine let me change the color then we'll discuss okay so zeta is over now if they are asking about TD also. Yes, definitely. Now we have to calculate TD, TR and percentage MP. So TD is nothing but 1 plus 0.7 of zeta divided by omega n. So this is 1 plus 0.7 into 0.6 divided by 5. Okay, please don't do like 0.4. This is omega and natural frequency. Okay, so if you calculate this, uh, you will get 0.355 second. Okay, I think yes, you will get this one or maybe 0 0.284. You you may get this one also. One of them is correct. Okay, you can check by yourself now. If I'll talk about TR, this is the rise time, the formula, you know very well, this is phi divided by omega d. So, pi minus cos inverse zeta divided by omega d is your 4. So, if you calculate this value, you will get 0.55 second. Okay, now he's asking for the maximum peak overshoot. So, the formula is e to the power minus zeta and pi under root of 1 minus zeta square okay so it will be 9.4 percent you will get okay so this thing is given in percentage so you'll get 9.4 i hope it's clear to you friends okay now we'll discuss about the steady state error so let's come to the steady state error so we'll come later what is the steady state but before that we'll discuss about the error what is the error so simple definition of the error i think you people will be agree with me the error is nothing but the deviation of output from input okay if you applied this is your system okay designed to get some value okay your system you applied some input let's take it you applied 100 your output or your requirement is you have to get the 100 over here this should be your output ct if this is your input rt but instead of 100 suppose you are getting 98 over here this is your output so if i'll ask the error you people immediately will reply me 
there is the error of 100 minus 98 that is 2 okay so what you are going to do over here this 100 belongs to the input or not and this 98 is belong to CT or not whatever you are getting and whatever you had initially the difference of this two is nothing but your error correct so your error is nothing but I can say this ET denoted by your error is denoted by ET ET is nothing but RT minus minus CT okay this is response of the system this is input to the system now here in this case this term is involved and that is steady state error steady state we already discuss anything which is at t equal to infinity or anything which is completely settled down is called the steady state okay so steady state error if I'll talk about study ESS steady state error okay so can I say when time tends to infinity your this ET is nothing but the steady state this is your error your error I'm considering at t equal to infinity and that will be my steady state error correct so I think you people know about the final value theorem according to final value theorem I can change it into the edge domain or the frequency domain so same thing I can write limit s tends to 0 s e s okay so in the time domain if time reaches to infinity in the frequency domain s will reach to the 0 you will multiply with s and multiply with the error signal es i hope it's clear to you now let's uh, take the block diagram this is the gs this is the open loop transfer function of any system okay over here i'll consider definitely the closed loop transfer function because error will come in the closed loop transfer function or i can say we can calculate error in the closed loop transfer function only this is cs this is the input stage of mixing over here i'll mix the feedback this is input stage rs now let me change the color okay to this i'll feed the output why I am feeding this output to do the correction means means uh, I can show you by this example this is your system you have designed this system to get the whatever input you have you you can get at the output stage okay but you are getting 98 so who will tell the input that output is not perfect output is somehow less your feedback okay your feedback will tell to the your input please increase yourself I am not getting desired value so your input will take the action accordingly it will actuate to the system okay some changes will be there inside and you will get the desired output so continuous correction is the property of closed loop control system okay so I hope it's clear to you now what is the error over here this is R is here for the unity feedback this is the unity feedback for the unity feedback this CS is coming over here so we have seen your error is nothing but the difference between two signals so this is your ES okay so es is nothing but input minus output so don't you think so this is your error signal over here you are feeding the error signal to the this system or the controller or the you know the system you know this is system parameter and your parameter will take action according to the error and you will get the output okay so what is my point my point is this is your error signal now if someone is asking the find out the transfer function or find out the response 
consider ES as the output. If someone will say you find out ES by RS, what will be the ES by RS? Means you have to start your journey at input RS, you have to go to ES. Over here you are getting only forward path and the gain is only 1. So here it's 1 divide by 1 and your loop. Your loop is over here. Your loop gain you will consider. Loop gain is GS into minus 1. So this is only GS. So this is your ES. Is it okay friends? Is there any problem with this? If you have problem in another way I can write over here. This ES is nothing but RS minus CS. You people will agree with me. Yes. This CS is nothing but GS into ES or not. GS into ES. This is your ES. You will take this ES to this side. You will get 1 plus GS of ES equal to RS. So your error will be RS divide by 1 plus GS. And we are getting over here the same thing. Okay. So the point is this is my steady state error. No, this is my error. Okay. My error is if I'll take only error ES. So ES is nothing but input divide by 1 plus GS. This is my error formula. Very, very, very important formula. Okay. E S is R S divide by 1 plus G S. Now if I am asking for the steady state error, what you will do? Steady state error you know very well. Limit S tends to 0, S into E S. Okay. So what you can write over here, limit S tends to 0, S into R S divide by 1 plus gs this is your error or not which type of error this is the steady state error we are talking about over here so is it clear to you good so friends our steady state error depends on two parameters and let me change the color two parameters one is c this is the steady state error so this is the input this is your system related term. So this R S or input may have 1 by S that is unit step 1 by S square. This is the RAM function whatever it is. Okay. So like this we have type of system which type of system we are using. And the second one is type of the system which type of system we are using. In the first case with type of input we are using and in the second case which type of system we are using. So our steady state error depends on two parameters types of input and types of system. So friends let's come to this. This is the very important point. point. So please open your third eye or your third mind or whatever. Please save it. This you have to save permanently. Okay. Your steady state error is calculated only for closed loop stable system. Tell me if your system is not stable, how you will calculate the error? For the stable system output is bounded or you will get the output. For the unstable system you will not get the output if you are not getting any output. So tell me one thing how you will find out the error? No, there is not possibility of you know for the error for the unstable system and this should be closed loop. Why closed loop? Because closed loop is the correction factor. How you will know that at the output stage you are getting error? Only the closed loop will tell you. Okay. So this is very important that steady state error is calculated only for the closed loop stable system and is valid only for the unity feedback. Unity feedback. See in this calculation in this entire calculation we found some formula of ES. In this formula we consider this is the unity feedback right. So whatever calculation we are going to do from now we have to consider the feedback should be unity. 
Okay, so this is our point that steady state error is valid only for the unity feedback system. If non-unity feedback system is given, what you will do? First, you will convert into the unity feedback, then you will proceed. Okay, then you will apply this formula that E S is nothing but R S one plus G S. If they ask the steady state error, you can find it easily. E S S is nothing but limit S tends to zero S E S, where E S is this. Okay, so now earlier I told you that the steady state error depends on two things. Number one is types of input, and the second is types of system. Okay, so one by one we'll discuss. First is types of input. So types of input we have basically three types: step input, ramp input, parabola input. So your input is over here. The standard form is A U T, where A is the gain of the system or the you know uh, magnitude of the your step function for this i can take this is a a t u t and for parabola the standard format is a by 2 t square over here u t this is standard format for the parabola this is for the ramp function and this is for the step function this is for the step okay now here some students may have doubt that ram function is unstable kind of thing parabola is also unstable kind of thing or the system which is not uh, bounded and we have seen the steady state is error is defined for the stable system only so why i'm going to consider this friends please try to understand i'm talking for the system not for the signals so these are in the category of signals you are going to provide some signals to the system you are getting output from the signal your signal may have unbounded there will be condition in the system which will be you know do this stable how if your system is uh, you know exponential decay kind of thing let's take like 3t to this system you are applying oscillation oscillation is not a stable signal but at the output stage you will get multiplication of this two in the frequency domain and convolution in the time domain you will get definitely will get under dim system means stable system okay so here the system should be stable then only we can calculate the sse steady state error so for the step the steady state error ready made formula i'm giving to you A divided by one plus KP, where this KP is the positional error constant. This KP is positional error constant, and calculated by this KP. I am talking about this is calculated by this limit A tends to zero G S. Okay, for the re ready-made formula for the ram function E S S is this is A by K V, where this K V is your velocity error constant, velocity error constant. Okay, so here K V you will calculate like this: limit A S tends to zero A S into G S. so the ready made formula for the parabola input or parabola uh, signal steady state error is a divided by ka where this ka is acceleration error constant acceleration error constant okay and the value of ka how you will calculate you will calculate limit s tends to 0 a square gs okay so in the question they'll give you suppose you have ramp input find out the steady state error they'll give you gs also so you will use this formula a will be there this is the magnitude over here this kv you will calculate by this limit a tends to 0 a into gs in this case uh 
wait a minute so in this case it's a uh, s tends to 0 g s in this case you'll multiply with this extra s over here you will multiply with extra s square okay so these are the ready made formula and uh, now we'll see the types of system okay the types of input we have seen over here now we'll see the types of system oh sorry yeah types of system now we'll discuss about so the standard format of any transfer function is nothing but we have seen all this one also k st1 plus 1 and so on so this indicates poles in the second class i think we studied this this indicates so sorry sorry i'm extremely sorry these are zeros and these are poles okay this end you know the type of system which type of system i'm using over here type of system and this k is the dc gain okay so friends uh this n may have 0 1 2 3 whatever now please observe carefully if your input is unit step let's take input is unit step here is your system here is your system means this formula this entire formula but i'm taking only type so s to the power n i'm going to consider over here I have to calculate steady state error for unit step. The ready made formula we discussed just now was 1 plus kp. This kp is nothing but uh, limit s tends to 0 gs if you remember. Okay. So if your system is type 1, let's take this s1 is given over here. So this is in denominator. So what value over here you will get, you will get infinity or not, tell me. You will get infinity, this GS is nothing but this. GS HS, HS is unity feedback. S will be in denominator, so 1 by 0 will be infinity. So your error will become 0. Here it's infinity, error will become 0. What it means? What it means, if, you see, your type is greater then your input in your input you have zero so your type is one over here so if your type is greater than your input input means let's understand in the time domain only ut is what this is constant term t to the power zero i can consider over here so let's take this zero value of the time function t and system is type one type is greater than type is greater than input so what you are getting error is zero now suppose this is s to the power zero over here so you will get some constant value some value will get over here nothing will cancel out you will get some constant so finally you will get error is some constant let's take it k1 so what it means if see input is zero output system is type also zero so when input will be equal to system type this is the type i'm talking about okay then you'll get constant error okay similarly if your input let's take this input is rt if your input is rt and to this rt you applied 1 by s so in the formula of k v calculation if you remember limit s tends to 0 s g s you need one extra s to cancel out this so 1 by s will be okay for rt okay but what if you apply this uh, instead of this you applied s to the power 0 means your type is less than input your input is your ramp and your type is 0 system type is 0 means input is greater than this in this case you will get infinity ok so when type is greater than input you will get a 0 error 
if time is equal to system type then you will get constant and if input is greater than type you will get infinity ok don't worry about this I am telling you the ready made thing wait a minute see friends uh, if your let me write over here first your type is greater than your input your type is equal to your input or your type is less than from your input so in this case you will get zero in this case you will get some constant in this case you will get infinity what it means what it means it means if you are going to apply ut to some system the type of the system should be zero means s to the power zero should be there in the system so you will get error okay for the system suppose you are applying your uh, rt so you need over here s to the power one so you will get ess if your this is parabola your system type is 2 you will get your steady state error ok so input and output are equal in types so you will get the constant error why I am saying this input is 1 see this is tut and this is ut only here t to the power 0 here t to the power 1 here t square ut and by 2 this is the standard format so this is the type of input I am considering in the time domain ok so input is 2 system is 2 constant input is 1 system is 1 constant input is 0 system is 0 constant I hope it's clear correct friend now what if for the unit ramp you will use this system if you will this system for the unit ramp you will get in this case your, your your input will be greater than your type so you will get infinity similarly for parabola if you will apply to this system you will get infinity and uh, over here wait if this unit step you will apply to this order 1 you will get 0 if this you will apply over here you will get 0 ok so I hope it's clear to you so in the next lecture we will solve problems we will start the problems actually the gate problems I will consider and I will clear all your concept and uh, I think in next 3 lectures those lectures will be continuously problem lectures I'll cover this chapter okay so we'll meet in the next till then take care and bye